Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very exponential equation. We have 2 to the power x times 3 to the power x squared times 5 to the power x cubed, and that's equal to 30. And we're going to be solving for x. Do you see the obvious solution? If not, that's okay. It is x equals 1. Why? Because 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. So x equals 1 is a solution. But that's not that interesting because there are other solutions. Or are there? Well, let's see if, let's see if what happens. We have an exponential equation, so it's kind of hard to deduce what's going to happen. But let's go ahead and turn this into a polynomial. Especially when the exponents are variables, you want to log both sides. And the base doesn't matter because we have three different bases, 2, 3, 5. You can use base 30. You can use base 10. You can use natural log, which is base e. That's what I'm going to use because ln is awesome. And Wolfram Alpha, unfortunately, writes it as log, log, so don't be surprised. So I'm going to go ahead and ln both sides. Now, what happens if you ln a product? You get a sum of ln. So it's going to be like ln 2 to the x plus ln 3 to the x squared plus ln 5 to the x cubed equals ln 30. I can go ahead and split up ln 30 into pieces, but let's not do that right now, and we're going to do it later anyways. Now, we can use the properties of exponents or the properties of logs. These are exponents, so we can kind of bring them down and write this as x times ln 2 plus x squared times ln 3 plus x cubed times ln 5 equals ln 30. One thing to keep in mind is Remember when I show you the original equation, I said that, okay, x equals 1 should be an obvious solution. Hopefully you got that, right? And even if you didn't, that's perfectly fine, because that's why you're here, right? To learn about logarithms and exponentials and all that stuff. Now, remember, x equals 1 is a solution. We kind of verified it, right? And here, you can see the same thing. If you replace x with 1, you're going to get ln 2 plus ln 3 plus ln 5, which is ln 30. And we have that on the right-hand side, so that's kind of cool. Great, x equals 1, but how do you find the other solutions? That is going to be the fun part. Now, obviously, I can use the cubic formula, right? Put everything on the same side and then use the cubic formula. You want to use that? I don't think so. That's going to be very painful, and I don't even know if it's going to give you something nice. But there is a better way to approach it by breaking down the ln 30, right? So we can kind of write this as x ln 2 plus x squared ln 3 plus x cubed ln 5 equals ln 2 plus ln 3 plus ln 5. Remember, that's what ln 30 is, right? And then bring all these things to the left while subtracting term by term. So in other words, we can write this as x ln 2 minus ln 2 plus x squared ln 3 minus ln 3. You see what I'm talking about? Plus x cubed ln 5 minus ln 5, and the whole thing is equal to 0. This is good because we kind of group the terms by common factors, and now we're going to factor. Let's take out an ln 2. We're going to get x minus 1, and then ln 3, we'll get x squared minus 1, and then ln 5, we're going to get x cubed minus 1. And guess what? These terms all have a common factor, which is, again, verified by the fact that x equals 1 is a solution, that implies that x minus 1 is a factor because this is a polynomial equation, right? The factor theorem tells us that. And you can kind of verify it because we have a common factor. Now, if you take out an x minus 1, you're going to get the ln 2. And from here, you're basically going to get the ln 3, but also x plus 1. I don't know how you want to write it, ln 3 times. It's probably better to write the x because that could be otherwise confusing. x plus 1 is the other factor times ln 3. And here, if you divide by x plus 1, I mean x minus 1, you're going to get x squared plus x plus 1 from difference of 2 cubes. And that's multiplied by ln 5. Awesome. So you get to see that this is 0 when x equals 1. So we're good on that. And guess what? This is quadratic. Yay! Obviously, that should be expected, right? You take a cubic, divide by a linear factor, and you'll get a quadratic. Great. How do you solve this quadratic? Let's go ahead and write it down as a quadratic. 
because it's not like a quadratic. It is a quadratic. I'm going to start by distributing this. So ln 5 is the coefficient of x squared. That's the only x squared term. And then we have ln 5x and ln 3x. I kind of combine them. Let me go ahead and write them first like this. And then I can combine next. That's going to be the coefficient of x. And then we have some constant terms. The constants are ln 2, ln 3, and ln 5. Get it? Just like from the other equation. And that kind of makes sense because Vieta's formulas tell us that the product of the roots is negative the last coefficient, the constant term, divided by a, which is the coefficient of x cubed. And one of the roots is 1, so the product is not affected. Make sense? Okay, good. Cool. Well, of course, a in this case is ln 5 because, is it? Anyways, you get the idea. So, how do we proceed? This is quadratic, so we have to use the quadratic formula. Unless there is a way to kind of simplify this. I'm going to start by writing this discriminant because that's going to be a lot of work. But to make it a little easier, we could combine these into ln 15 and this one into ln 30. You see what I'm saying? Kind of condense them so that finding discriminant will be a little easier. So discriminant in this case would be b squared minus 4ac. And notice that ln 15 squared is going to be less than 4 times ln 5 times ln 30. Why is that? If you think about it, this could be written as ln e to the fourth. So e to the fourth is a pretty large number. I don't know. But I'm just guessing it's going to be maybe like 50s, 40s, 50s, because 3 to the fourth is 81, and 2.7 to the fourth is probably going to be something like 45. I don't know. I'm totally guessing. But if you multiply these three lns, it's definitely going to be greater than ln 15 squared, because it's only going to be the product of ln 15 and ln 15, and both of these are greater than 15. And there's a 4 to make things worse, or maybe better. Anyways, to keep a long story short, the discriminant will be negative, which means you're going to have complex solutions. Isn't that exciting? How do you write them? Negative b plus minus the square root of something negative. So I'm going to put out an i and switch around the discriminant so that we can make it positive because when we write i we have to have a, a positive number inside because that's real and that all of that is divided by 2 ln 5. So we have one real two complex solutions. Do you like it? Of course the real solution is x equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and Bye-bye.